All right, here we go. All right, welcome to the Woodward Pistons podcast. My name is Brandon. You might know me by Detroit Kool-Aid. I am joined, as I will be weekly, by Morning Woodward Show alum, Mr. Jeff Iafredi. Listen, man, if you guys like basketball talk, this guy knows how to break it down. Also, hey, let's get that drum roll going right now. Hey, we are joined by <laughs> the legend himself, Mr. Rod Beard. Looking Bro, spiffy you, today, too. Hey, he is, man. How are you doing this morning? Hey, I'm uh, up and ready to go. I haven't had my coffee yet, but we're, we're getting there. Hey, see, look, we, we don't have any excuse because we're right next door to uh, Birmingham Rose. So, you know, we're always a little oh, bit yeah. fueled up. <laughs> I would have a, if I was next to a coffee shop, I'd just have an IV rolling around, just, just weird <laughs> coffee in it, going straight in the vein. Hey, look, man, when we get you in to the, uh, into the studio one day, we'll definitely make sure we got yeah, that. That's going. on us. We'll get you. Yeah, definitely. let's do that. Let's do that. But, um, you know, we want to start off first by uh, acknowledging, um, you know, the passing of Bob Lanier, uh, a Pistons great. You know, um, I, I understand his time was just a little bit before some of the more popular times in Pistons history, but he was still one of the best players in Pistons history, period. A really good person, somebody who was really, really, uh, I think, a powerful figure in the NBA in general, especially after his playing days. And I didn't know if you gentlemen wanted to say anything Um you know, before we got into any of the other topics, but I just wanted to make sure we started off by at least acknowledging uh, Bob Lanier. No, no, he he was an icon. I mean, before, when you're talking about the, the guys in the Pistons pantheon, you talk about Dave being Isaiah Thomas, Bob Lanier is right mm -hmm. there in that same conversation. Uh, 14 years here with the Pistons, average uh, double-double, 20 and 10. But, I mean, it's just what he meant to the league also is that he became one of the big, ambassadors for the league and for uh, right. the, the team and, and everything else. Um, but the, a cancer battle that he uh, didn't win, and, and it's just a sad day for Pistons Nation that uh, Bob Linder passed away, 73 years old. Yep, yep. And we'll definitely uh, make sure we keep all those affected, uh, you know, in our thoughts and our prayers, uh, make sure that they can all properly be comforted and, and, and grieve during the right time. So um, uh, definitely remember the good moments. And uh, yeah, it's never uh, it's never an easy easy thing, right? But I know we have a lot coming up. Let me see here, where are we at? As it relates to the Pistons, we have what the draft? Yes, the draft. We have the draft lottery coming up Tuesday. Next, yep, next week. Yeah, the Wilbur Pistons draft lottery show is coming up. Rod, right? we're gonna have to get you involved somehow. I remember last year he was tied up so crazy for both the draft lottery <laughs> and the draft yeah. uh but this year hey we're gonna get it going the draft lottery is having um our, our show is getting a lot of uh a lot of feedback man like like a lot of people are saying you guys doing it this year we're looking forward to it i remember the reaction got over twenty five thousand. yeah you know views but what everybody wants to know is this as it relates to the draft you know who we're gonna pick but jeff had a really 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 interesting question that we didn't get to ask you last week I wanted to let you ask him that as it related to landing in the top four. Well, people talk about the prospects in, in this draft and, and the importance. Obviously, last year, landing the number one overall pick. I want to ask you, Rod, how important is it for you know the Pistons to be in that top four? Or you know, is it not because of who's selecting? What is your thoughts on it? I mean, it, it kind of depends on what their board looks like. And uh, most people would say, uh, Holmgren, Jabari Smith, and, and Paolo Bancaro are in the top three. So that fourth is the one that really makes you scratch your head because is it Jaden mm -hmm. Ivey? Is it Shaden Sharp that you um, that is that number four guy? Keegan Murray is somebody who could be, I mean, with everything that we talked about with their forward position and how they could be flexible there, Keegan Murray is cer certainly a guy that you would look at and say, hey, that's not a bad consolation prize. Um, it's, it's where it is. If we're talking about five, not the end of the world, six, eh, you start to shake your head a little bit, and seven, um, you can still make some some cases for that um, Ben Matherin is, is a guy that maybe could still be around and still could help them because they have so many holes that they need to fill, uh, even just from a depth, per, depth perspective, that we didn't really get to see everything they could do with the roster this year because of injuries and COVID and everything else. That um, doesn't have to be in the top four, but it really, um, really changes the equation and changes the math if they do end up in that top four. Right, right. And, and you know what? 
it, 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 we get a little bit uneasy when we start talking about potentially dropping, you know, six right. or seven, which, hey, as Pistons fans, we kind of have to ex- like expect that. Like, I, I do. I go into this draft lottery like I did last year, believing we were going to drop. So it made the excitement when we got the number one pick. Trust me, it was it was pure. It was pure. Right. It was it was enthusiasm. It was real. Um, if we drop to seven, what I'm going to do is challenge you guys here. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, let's look at Matthew and let's look at Keegan because these are guys that I know we will look. And and nine times out of ten, Troy is going to take somebody with that number seven pick. But right. I want to ask you guys this. What is the perfect scenario? You know, if we drop to seven, what does that perfect trade back scenario look like for you? I know we didn't get a lot of time to probably look over it, but is it something that kind of piques your interest just a little bit, knowing how well Troy Weaver has drafted in the first round with multiple picks already in his uh, early tenure as Pistons GM? I mean, if you look at just the history of the Pistons, like a lot of the guys we bring up and, and the misses, I mean, you'd say the Donovan Mitchells or the Devin Bookers, None of these guys were top, you know, let alone top five picks. So it's it's not about where you select, it's who you select. And I think with Troy Weaver, the confidence I have, if you do land at seven, I mean, Rod brought up a, a handful of prospects. It's not about, yes, you're going to miss on, you know, probably Chet, Paulo, and Jabari Smith. But, you know, to what Rod said, there's so many holes on this team. I think people overlook that and they just yeah. want, you know, and this draft I think is, is deeper than people think. I, I think you can go 10, 15 deep in this draft, to be honest with you. Um, now the top three guys are the best players, but I, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I trust Troy as a, just a talent evaluator. He could have been the difference between a Luke Kennard and a Donovan Mitchell. Hmm. You know what I mean? Just evaluating those guys. So I'm not too worried about dropping to seven. Now, would you want Jabari Smith or Paulo or Chet, of course, but right. if you could still get your hands on a guy like Keegan Murray or, or Ben Matherin, you're happy. So for you, there is no perfect trade back. It's like, you know, pick at seven. I'm good. We have some really, really, really good prospects. Yeah. Yep. It does I'm intrigue good. me just a little bit to think if there's a possibility to get two first round draft picks in this draft to potentially see what we can do. You right. know, I have to look at the teams to see who can actually facilitate something like that. And what happens with Jeremy, too? You got to see what and happens. What with happens with Jeremy as well, and what happens with them. You know, it's it's interesting because when we're playing 2K, trust me, and, and when we see certain teams do it, yeah, I want to run all the young guys. I, yeah. I want to go, like, I can see there being a situation where they flip this pick, you know, into, like, in Jeremy Grant into, like, three first-round picks. And they're just out there <laughs> team with... Team full of rookies out there. <laughs> team full of rookies. Right. Whatever. Like, like nope. next year's, like, Rising Stars game is going to be the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> but part of me is like, you know what? Because you, you know what, see, this is why doing these podcasts with guys like Jeff is so bad. Like, I love Jeremy Grant, but he gets me thinking sometimes, like, yo, what if this team was really a bunch of young guys, but like gunners, not like a bunch of young guys. I don't know if this is going to get me hated on or anything, but like Orlando. Like, have, like they, they have, like, a lot of young talent that just right. isn't really, in my opinion, going to go anywhere. Hey, Wagner, I love that dude. But everybody else, I'm just kind of like, yeah, they don't really move the needle. I believe that this draft, it is deeper than we even give it credit for. We go, first we say, if we drop to seven, it's okay. Then we're like, man, 10 to 15 is okay. If you get two draft picks in this first round, man, it makes me just think, yo, this business team could really, really, really be fun. Really be fun. I mean, I'm not completely opposed to Jalen Duran. I could could see a world where he's effective. And I don't know what that means for their, I mean, you got to see what shakes out with Bagley and, how Stewart develops in the offseason. But, I mean, that's not a a, a negative to say that Duran could be a, a target that they look at. Even yeah. um, he's slotted somewhere around the 10 or 11 mark. But, yeah, if you've got the 7 or 8 and that's a guy that you like, then what? Certainly. That's, that's right. somebody you take a look at there. And just to add to your point about, you know, having a team full of young guys, obviously you do need veterans. Like you, you saw the impact of Patrick Beverly with the Timberwolves. Like, like teams need these veterans. And, and obviously, you know, Troy understands that. You can't just have a team full of young guys running out there trying to win, figure out how to win. <laughs> Dwayne's probably going to rip his head off trying to figure it out. But um, what I do appreciate, though, is, you know, if you do get first two first-round picks, those are two guys that are going to be able to contribute. Like, if you're in the – let's say you, you have a pick at six. Especially if Troy's picking them. Oh, absolutely. You could find town, you know, at 13, 14, 15, whatever Jeremy gets traded for if he does. I don't know the future, but um, I love the outlook. I mean, he's just having more it. talent, man. You're just, you're just throwing them out there, man? Yeah. Hey, look, appreciate you, Jeremy. Uh, no, <laughs> appreciate you, but – But, uh, yeah, look, you know, let's stay on the draft talk. Let's stay on the draft talk. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I think – 
this draft is becoming deeper. When I first thought about the question, I was like, man, it would be intriguing. Um, I, I believe that there are other veteran players we can get for this time. Right. I, I think Jeremy Grant fits good. They might not necessarily be ready for that veteran player to put them over the top to start winning. Uh, the Wolves, they went through a series of draft yes, picks years. before yeah. they went to Patrick Beverly. And that's more to your point that you yeah. said last time. You said, you know what? Do they need this player right now? Or do they need to continue to build, continue to stock talent? And I think that's where Jeremy Grant, he just, he just, he's this kind of in the middle type of a player all the way around. You could trade him for a draft pick and it would be good. You could keep him, it, yeah. it could be good. You could slot him at a certain, like at the four or the three, and it could, it could really work. Uh, it's the ultimate for me, it's the ultimate asset. Yeah. It's the ultimate asset for Troy Weaver. It was a masterful signing, and that's the way you want to sign these guys. Mm -hmm. That's if you're going to throw the 20 at him, you want him eventually to be something that can be a Swiss Army knife for you when it comes down to draft and free agency. But which player? So let's look at the, the flip side. If we don't drop, if we're in the top four, which player? And I know we always say this oh, talent, talent, talent. It doesn't matter. Which one's going to be the superstar next to Cade? Which one is going to be. That player that's like, you know what, if we get him, I know that that guy is going to be, yeah, maybe second to K, but when K's not there, we, we, we all know that this guy could be that, that deal. Which guy is that? And, and I'll just answer this quickly by saying this. I think Chet, obviously everyone's obsessed with him, but you said something interesting, second to Cade. I don't think Chet will be this second, you know, I, I would put my money on Paulo or Jabari Smith. If I had to bet money, or you know, you, you even had guys, sneaky guys in this draft like Shaden Sharp and everybody. I don't know. I, it's hard to predict people's careers. But what I will say is this: if you land in that top three and you take Paulo Bencaro or Jabari Smith, those are two guys that I believe their games will go to a whole nother level with a, pre, a playmaker like Cade. I mean, especially Paulo. I mean, his athleticism. You have Jabari's shooting ability. It's hard for me to kind of make a, 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 a you know a vague draw between those guys. I'll take either two. I think if I had to bet money, it's it's those two guys. To be honest with you. Um, but still, some of the guards, too. I mean, Shaded Sharp, Jaden Ivey, I think those guys are going to have fantastic careers. So this is my point. Like, this draft is, is way deeper than, than we think. <laughs> it's getting I think too there's going to be multiple great so, players. So, no, i got to put you on the hot seat then. you got to pick one. Who is the one? Jabari Smith. That's Jabari been my Smith. guy. Yeah, just because I feel like, in a way, if, if you looked up Troy Weaver's guy in the dictionary, there's just a picture of Jabari Smith right there in a little headshot. I mean, you have a guy who's versatile. Um, obviously, he brings more spacing for this ball club. You, you can shoot threes at an effective yeah. rate. I mean, he's got to work on his efficiency just in general, but from three, I mean, he's, he's got the best jump shot coming out of, out of college this year, in my opinion, um, at 6'11". Um, he's kind of like, in, in, in a way, if you trade Jeremy Grant, he could fill that role immediately. Um, I think he's obviously much more polished than Jeremy coming right into the league. So I, I, give me Jabari Smith. Yeah, yeah. For me, Jabari Smith as well. And I've been yeah. on wax, man, saying that he's just this player that intrigues me similar to Kay Cunningham. People will talk about efficiency and Kay got to the league and we realized that doesn't really matter when he gets going. Right. He's a hooper. And that's what Jabari Smith reminds me of. I, I've been on that, you know, on the Jabari Smith train saying, Hey, let, let's try, let's draft this guy. Yeah. I've flirted with Chet a little bit. I, I kinda like some of the spurs that I saw out of Bancaro. But consistently, it's been Jabari Smith. I think when he gets to the league, the spacing that the NBA provides already. Oh, I said no this click. about Kay Cunningham, too. The spacing that the league will provide him is going to be something different. And I told people, Jalen Green, because he's already playing in an NBA type of a system in the G League, he's going to look similar when he's scoring. He's already used to the pace. I don't think you're going to see much of a jump. But out of Kay Cunningham, you're going to see this player come in and get that 15, 5, and 5. Right. Because the NBA caters to his pace. And I believe in looking at Jabari Smith, we're going to see the same type of jump. A player who comes in, and we see this every now and then, those players in college who were like, why did they get picked in the top five? Their numbers in college were pedestrian. And then all of a sudden, they're just, they just blossom. Yep. You know, one of those players for me is like Jaron Jackson Jr., you know, and I believe that, that Jabari Smith is going to be a better player than him. But just the way that it, it, it you know, to be able to have one of those guys, to be able right. to have the opportunity to pick one of those guys, I, he's the one for me. And, and before Rod goes, I just want to add yeah. this. People forget that Jabari Smith was the best player on the best team in college basketball for a while, like for a majority of the year. So it's not like he was on Duke playing with multiple other first-round picks. He was the guy on Auburn, the single hand, and people want to give him flag for March Madness, go ahead. 
But <laughs> they'll learn. They'll learn. They'll learn. I mean, that's what happened with Kate too. But we got to get your uh, we got to get your input on it, Rod. No, I, I agree with uh, Smith, and I've gone back and forth between Paolo and uh, Jabari Smith. Um, I've never been a Chet guy. It just just something <laughs> just doesn't pass the sniff. Test. I can vouch for that. <laughs> just just for me, it, he's 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 never passed the sniff test of being a, a guy that's going to come in and be. Uh, different. I've always said, if you're going to be seven feet mm-hmm. and and be a perimeter player, you better be Dirk Nowitzki. That's the best uh, comparison I can make. And if you're not that, I got big questions. Right. So yeah, I think Jabari's that guy. And and uh, like we just said, it, it it is he played on a team that didn't have significant talent like a Duke. You put Jabari Smith on Duke, or you put him on Gonzaga with all those guys around him. It, I think they're different teams also. So oh, um, gosh, I hope we get and, Jabari and, Smith. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's. I, I can see next to K that that would be um, something that they could really, really build on with the, the pieces that they have right now in the nucleus. Yeah, I, I think that that would just be special. That, that's where the NBA is going to. Like, you need guys that can hit threes, hit jump shots, and defend, be versatile. Like, he can do all that perimeter defense. Like, he checks all these boxes. So I feel like in a way, and people talk about, well, you know, what is he when his shot's not falling? Well, he's a great defender. And I think Dwayne Casey's the perfect coach for him because he, his game is, there's so much unlock there the to unlock for, mm-hmm. for Jabari Smith. Yeah, Paulo, he can develop a jump shot. That's why I love Paulo as well. But Jabari, just something about him, man. Something up top, yes, man. When that's he what plays, it is. it's a certain, it's the whole basketball versus Hooper debate. And yes. I want both of my players. I don't want just a Hooper. I don't want just a basketball player. I like the fact that we can look at Kay Cunningham and we can see this is a knowledgeable player who, when it's time to go out there and get it, can go out there and get it. This is a player who had all of the same negatives attributed to him. When you look at all the strengths and weaknesses during the draft profiles, Jabari Smith is starting to have some of the same weaknesses or cons or drawbacks or whatever. Mm-hmm. Those things get figured out in the NBA because at that stage, you're playing with, like like Rod said, much more polished basketball players. Right. Even the, the worst mm-hmm. of teams are going to be much more polished basketball players who are working at their craft daily for hours yeah. it's, it's it's much different this game will suit jabari smith and, and to to rod's point you know about chet i <laughs> i saw cannon and some other people that were really really high on on, on uh, chet and he asked me one question and i'm gonna ask you this too jeff okay <laughs> andre drummond on a good night is he getting 20 and 20 on chet <laughs> 30 and 20 uh, yeah <laughs> I'm gonna say, I, listen, thirty and twenty. <laughs> yeah, but see, but see, here's the difference: is that Chet's not a center, so he wouldn't yep. dare. Yeah, be he'd have to be weak side help to come over and 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 really be guarded by Drummond or anything like that. So it's still who's he guarding on the floor? Your slow five, four. I don't want to see him guard Jeremy Grant. I mean, okay, so so let's do it this way: even Isaiah Stewart, who's an undersized five. Jeez. would push him completely out of the paint <laughs> and just do whatever he needed to do. So yep. he's not guarding him. Is is Sadiq Bey going to – he's not the quickest, but is he going to be able to get his shot off against uh, uh, Chet? Yeah. Right. I mean, mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see where he fits. I mean, yes, he's going to have offensive advantages because of his height, but just other stuff that, um, yeah, on both ends, I can't see him being a plus player. Right. I, uh, I think that's people are lumping him, him – yeah, I feel like people have been lumping him in with Wiseman and Mobile, who yeah. are two-way players. And they're just saying, oh, he's a tall guy with offense. Right. And they're just saying, hey, <laughs> he's he's like that too. People forget Evan Mobley at USC, man. I mean, listen, Chet's really good, but I will say this. With Chet, what scares me, and Rod brought up just him being, he obviously can't play the five. It's his frame and the ability to get injured. Like you're playing in 82-game season. You're going up against guys, like you said, the best of the best, guys that are going to get up in your grill, especially yep. Chet. On, uh, uh, if he's on the, playing on the perimeter, they're going to go after him. That's what scares me is his, is his, his health. Like yep. it's Now, can he get bigger? Of course. But you know, well, 82 games, what, what am I getting out of Chet out of 82 games? Can, yeah. can, he, can he play a full 82 games? I don't know. With a heavier, right. with a heavier weight. I, right. I don't know. You're right. You're right. And we see this yeah, and, with these bigs. And la- last thing I got for you, yeah. big man like that, what do you worry about more than anything? Feet, knees. Yep. Did, does, are, are they going to have foot problems or knee problems? And mm. he doesn't have a lot of weight and pressure that he's putting on him. But with, with anybody like that, it's always because of the, the density of the bones and the cartilage and stuff in the knees. That's that's right. Yeah, right. I got I got big, big questions about Chet and whether you want to use a number one or a number two pick on somebody 
um, that that you have question marks about. So that's all I got. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and look, you guys have helped me. And I was only chuckling through this thing because it's not like we did like a crazy ton amount of prep or anything. But the basketball minds at work. It's like as soon as I say certain things, both of you guys just start smirking. Yeah, like, oh, no, we, we, nah. all, we all agree. We all agree because <laughs> yeah. we all know. It's mutual. I like we all it. know what's up. I like it. Hey, but Rod, thank you again. Hey, we're going to get this thing, uh, the time pushed up a little bit next oh, yeah, week. yeah, absolutely. And we're going to have some fun. Appreciate you, Rod. Right, appreciate appreciate it, you. Hey, to the legend, man. <laughs> all right, sir. All right, till next time. Hey, I like that one. No, we had we had. He gave us a better one this time. You see the the picture? He gave us a better one. This time. <laughs> <laughs> now, now all of our jokes are funny now. Yeah, all of them. That's Boy, we got the rise. Here. We got it. We got it. But you know what? I'm glad we started with the Pistons talk yeah. in the beginning. Hey, shout out to Anthony too. Pistons talk. But um, I think Rod made some great points. Uh, a lot of times when we're doing this, we know that we're showing what we're showing. But Rod is seeing this from the ground level. He's hearing what the players are saying. He's hearing what the teams are saying. He's seeing these guys practice. Right. Even though he doesn't have necessarily access to the draft picks and, and, and the, tri the, the draft prospects, he's in the know. Right. He's in the know. And so if these are, are the things that he's willing to say. These are the things that we also know he's hearing. Uh, so I don't know. It's comforting to, to know that we're kind of at least here. There's not a lot of disagreement. I do want to see the Pistons potentially, if they can, if they drop, see what they can do to flip that pick. I am interested to see what that can look like. I am interested also to see what that can look like if paired with something else. Right. So if they do drop and we believe that Jabari Smith is that guy, I'm almost to the point that I'm like, yo, Troy Weaver, go get him. Go get yeah. him. You got the you have the capital. You yeah. have the assets. Uh do we do we have a first round pick that we can trade next year or no? I'm sure. First round. I can look it up. Yeah, yeah, because I, I wasn't I wasn't one hundred percent sure. I know that we traded a first round pick before, but obviously that wasn't uh today or or, or this year or last year. Cause that makes a difference. But um Yeah. I'm gonna uh <laughs> Yo, we got to get also into what we did Friday, bro. Yeah, we do. We got one next year. But anyway. We do have one next year? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah go on to what we did. Yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah, we're going to get into what we did Friday. But I guess just to close off this draft talk, um, you're, you're safe with picking anywhere in the top seven. Yeah, I think seven. I mean, listen, there's seven guys. We can go through. We mentioned Jalen Dern, which is actually a, a, no one's a really talking one. about Jalen Dern. That's another guy Pistons need. So I, I think with this team and the amount of needs they have, I mean, if you needed, let's say you needed a Jabari Smith at this point, then obviously go get him. But I, I think the Pistons need much more just talent in general. Yeah. So I think nothing specific. Now, I want my guy Jabari, but again, <laughs> if you get a Keegan Murray, I think we're all celebrating either way. Hey, so, so what you're telling me then is it is truly the Kate effect. Yes. That's truly absolutely. what it is. In it's the Troy effect, effect, both of them. Yeah, it's just because I know who's taking them and I know who's playing with them. Yep, and honestly, <laughs> I know that a lot of people are a little bit mixed on Coach Casey, but we know who's coaching them too. Bingo, they got the three right there. We, we know. So these players, these draft picks, they're not coming into anything dysfunctional like Andre Drummond did. You guys go back and look at what Andre Drummond had to Man. deal with. How many general managers and coaches did he have? Not, and he yeah. started his career off on the bench. Wasn't fair. If Killian Hayes started off underneath where Drummond started off, He'd be out of the league already. Yeah, we ain't the Spurs, man. Nah. I mean, you can't, you know. Nah. We need players to play. Yep. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's what I love. You know, when we're not the Spurs or the Warriors, an organization with a culture, and that's what we're trying to approach. We're trying to build a culture. Absolutely. To where then your draft picks can come in, and if they need to take a whole year off, they can. Mm -hmm. If they need to just, hey, start slow that they can. That's, that's a great point, man. I, I'm glad that you brought that up. You know, our trust right now is on a whole new level and it's interesting from someone like you because your perspective on the Pistons is going to be a little bit different than mine in uh, history. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I came in when they sucked. They drafted Grant Hill. You saw the foundation. Now, I hope that Kate Cunningham has more success like to go on the work Pistons than what Grant Hill had. Right. You know, but I saw it get built and then kind of going down. Someone like you who has stuck through really – but the Pistons have been bad most of your... Yeah, since like and, 2009, 2010. Yeah, like most, legitimately watching, yeah. But, but that's the thing. Most people, most people I meet in your age group, they're not fans of the Pistons. They're fans of players. They're fans of other teams. Right. Your knowledge of it, your passion of it, man. Yo, Rod and I were talking about it, too. 
they were like, yo, no, he knows this stuff. He loves this stuff. Yeah. He loves this stuff. And it, it is. It's a testament to it, man. It's a testament. So when we get on here and we do these shows, I do want people to know it's with people who love this, man. It's with people who love the Pistons. And that's what Woodward Pistons is about. Um, and you will know that. And that's what sports is about in yeah. general. Like, just people being passionate, man. Like, yeah. despite, I mean, we're, I'm a Lions fan, for Christ's sake. <laughs> like, I mean, talk that's about, at least reason. Pistons have his, history in, in, the, yep. in their Champions organization. At least we have things we can look forward to. But, right. You know, speaking of that, though, the passion. The passion. It doesn't just stay right here in these seats, oh, no. man. It doesn't. It doesn't stay in this in the polo. No, no. Nah. getting out there and, Hey, look, we were out there. <laughs> we were out there. We were hooping. We were getting really it. out there. We really were. I don't what we won our first two games. First yeah, two or three yeah, games. We did. Actually, we did. Hey, look, we have never played together. No, but we were out there. We were looking like what you see. I don't have the hat on today. I had to come with the Kobe look. When's the last time you legit like, were in a gym playing organized like at least like that? Because oh, it was for years. me. For me, it's been uh, probably a good year too. I it's, mean, playing. I mean, we play outside and stuff like that. But in, in a gym. With other hoopers playing like with at least three, four, not, not afraid to jump, <laughs> not afraid to jump. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was something. Um, it was refreshing. Absolutely. It was, it was kind of revitalizing, man. Getting back out there, getting the juices going, man, and just, oh man, dribbling the ball. It's something different about hearing the ball hit hard. Oh, that's yeah. It's something different, man. It's something different about not playing on those park rims that are like doubled up. Your like knees feel rims. better. Yeah, Your knees. <laughs> I was touching the rim again, man. Yep. Yo, look, the dunks are coming. Uh, but how were you feeling doing the uh, doing the runs, man? I felt good, man. We went out. Me, Brandon, we had Mike out there. Um, we yeah. rolled up. Oh, Eric Vincent showed up. Eric Vincent, he did show up. Obviously, you know, it sucks because as I was leaving, Eric showed up. Next time, we will be balling <laughs> with Eric at the start. We'll be getting fours yeah. in with him. But it was just fun. I mean, getting out there, meeting the people. Um, yeah, that was cool to new people finding out about what we're doing. They became fans of what we're doing. They're showing, mm -hmm. you know, we're just connecting with honestly the the public. I think this is the whole goal of what we're doing. Like just yeah. getting to the fans. I mean, these guys are Pistons fans, just hooping. And we got an opportunity to play with them. Um, we won our first couple games. We, we played against some excellent players uh, towards the end. I mean, guys showed up and you know jumping, uh, leaping. I mean, uh, so <laughs> other than that, though, man, it was fun. I mean, just to see a, just to see your shot fall, like just to see my shot fall in a gym like yeah. that. I mean, it, it, that's that's what the whole point of getting out there, getting a workout, having fun, connecting with the people, yep. just making some shots. I mean, yeah, it was fun, it, man. It, ultimately, it's about community, and that's what it's Absolutely. about. You know, getting out yeah. there. We were. Uh, it's for the culture as well. The Pistons, they are back. I know what the record may indicate to other people, but we also understand that that record this year was for a purpose. Right. Yeah, and that's going to get us a great player to put next to K Cunningham for years to come. And it was cool to see that people were tapped in, bro. They weren't checked out. Yeah. They weren't checked out. We're like, hey, yo, you clued into the Pistons? Yeah. And most of the people, why? Because Cade Cunningham. Mm -hmm. We know that's the, 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 the fact. You know, when he, when they drafted Cade, they sold over $700,000 in tickets Crazy. that day. Crazy. That's the Cade effect, man. The Cade effect. To the point that we can say if we drop in this draft, it's okay. It's the Cade effect. To the point that when Woodward Pistons pulls up to a gym, hey, there were people there. There was a couple people who said, yeah, no, I know what y'all are doing. I know what you guys are about. And that's cool because they understand that we're about pushing Pistons culture. It's not about right. necessarily Detroit Kool-Aid. It's not necessarily about Jeff. It's not necessarily about, hey, Sean Murphy, wherever he is. You know, it's it's about the Pistons. Right. Ultimately, that's what it's about. And we got to um, get more people down there. So we if, do. You're, if you're watching, man, stay just locked in. Hey, Follow us on Twitter. We'll be tweeting about it. Yep, yep, when yep. we're going. On socials, we'll definitely make sure that we we let you know maybe a day or two in advance the, the next gym or park that we're going to be at. Hey, we're yeah. going to be out there again maybe a couple times a week because we're looking to really, really connect. And we're looking to see who's actually a hooper. Yeah. Oh, look, we did the real hooper check. It's it's okay. All of us can talk it. That's fine. I'm not going to handle anybody. <laughs> but can you come out here and guard me? Can you come out here and guard my man, Jeff? <laughs> Bro, where's Mike? He's, can they guard Mike? Yeah, that's true. Mike Fundamental. Hey, can can they? Uh, hey, come on out here, man. Come on out Mike here. Mike Fundamental. He's over there <laughs> next door. No, man, it was fun. <laughs> Is I he mean, over there? In general, like, just to let loose a little bit. Like, I had that. <laughs> I was throwing behind the bag passes to Kool Aid. <laughs> I mean, we were just out there, just Bro, let loose. And yeah. and they were <laughs> looking at us rolls. like, are they running set plays yeah. right now? <laughs> I love it, man. That's I was trying to make uh, Coach Casey proud, man. Yeah. But yeah. we were hooping. I'm talking about all the shots were going down, all the threes were going down, the layups, the dribble drives, the no-look passes. Yeah. And then the dead legs hit, bro. 
The I never age. felt so trash in my life. <laughs> Dude, it hit. It felt like it hit suddenly. Like, we played the first two, three games, and then we ran fours. We were good. We and took then we're that good. little break. We took the break. The break is what got me, because the minute I sat down, I'm like, all right, legs, yep. This is the rust kind of coming off here. The legs hurt. The, they get yep. the quads hurting. And then, you know, hey, you want to run another one? Well, of course I'm going to run another one. So we run another one. Oh, my God. But it's just you don't realize that your lungs are dead already. Yes. Well, <laughs> if you're, if everyone knows when your legs go, the jump shot's struggling. Just because, like, it just you, you can't get it. That, that last game we played, I knew. I'm like, all right, boys. Yeah, no, no, nah, nah, look, bro. We're Jeff checked out. checked out. He checked out while he was ahead, bro. And, yeah. I, and I should have probably I did out that. When I, was ahead. I did, man. I tried to jump for a layup. <laughs> <laughs> look, man. First two games felt like I'm like smacking out, like yo, I'm about to dunk out, man. When the legs are gone, I'm like, it feels like I'm throwing a brick at the rim, yeah. bro. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> like, How was Eric? I know he showed up. Did he play? Hey, that's you know what. He bought out. He, he came in a jersey with his own name on it. And when you do that, you, you have to. Hoop. You got to be able to hoop, man. You, you have to. Him. I, I don't do that. I, I, I'm i not showing up with it. Even if I think I can hoop, yeah. it's like there's always going to be better people. But, no, Eric came out there. He did his thing, man. He had a couple threes, had a nice pass, uh, had a nice layup. And we're going to start getting footage of this stuff up. I was about to say, I got to see Eric, check. man. He got he was that, doing his thing. He's a long, like, 6'2". He's got long yep. arms. I'm like, that that man. Yep. He was talking junk, too, man. I was like, oh, he's a talker. Oh, yes? I like that. He's Eric? a talker. He's oh, a talker. that's my guy. That's the dude I want to play he's with. He's a talker. I love talkers. But, like, no, no. No cap. People can hoop, man. Yeah. People can hoop. I was going to ask, like, you know, game check. But no, this guy can hoop. Michael hoop. Eric can hoop. And we're looking to interact more, like you said. Stay locked into our socials. Stay locked into the Twitter, What We're Pistons on Twitter, What We're Pistons on YouTube, Instagram. Uh, soon, the podcast will be up and live on Spotify, Apple, and everywhere else. Right. And you can have fun. Getting dunked on. Getting crossed over. Right? Until <laughs> the legs give out. <laughs> but hey, we got nothing. Hey, look. I wanted to ask you something else non-Pistons related, man. So, well, kind of Pistons related. Did you see this um, in the Detroit News? Shout out to Rob Beard. I did see this. And they were talking about this cruise ship that yeah. sails all around, I guess, like the Great Lakes, man. You can get all the way up to Niagara Falls, Detroit, Milwaukee, among other destinations. It's supposed to be one of the best around. It's supposed to be the, the cruise ship is supposed to be better than the ones that are selling right now out in, the, out in the Caribbean. I don't know how Detroit is getting to come up like this, but hey, it's about time. I was going to say deservedly so. Like, uh, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm that'd be, that'd be nice to take, like, just to go with your girl, man. Like, go on a cruise ship, go to Niagara Falls. Like, are you joking me? Around the city of Detroit? Like, people always talk about, mm -hmm. see, people that haven't been to Detroit talk about Detroit, Preach which, it, man. which pisses me off because... Especially people on the West Coast or even the East Coast, like yeah, Detroit this, Detroit that. When you actually come out here and you mm -hmm. and you go into, into the city, you try things like especially what they got going on now, what they're doing with the city, yep. bringing you know a little Caesar Arena now. Last couple years, you have all the sports teams all right around each other. You got Motor yep. City Cruise down there, like it's just a different vibe now. Like and that's what I'm excited for, man. Like the cruise ship, just I mean, sign me up. Sign I'm, me I'm up. good with it. I'll go down on a cruise ship. Sign go to me Niagara up. Falls. Yep. And, and look, get my vacation on. I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah, and look, I know it's easy for us to just say, hey, look, we'll take our girls. This might be a little bit more difficult. Look, usually those little cabins will have four bunks in them. Oh, so this is like you? A, a crew trip. Yes. With the boys. Yes. What three? Oh, okay. What three? And I was going to lock it into Detroit Pistons, and we will. Mm -hmm. We will. We'll keep it at Detroit Pistons. We'll do a sports edition later. But what three Detroit Pistons in history are you taking? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know what? Give me the worm, number one, because I feel like Ooh. Dennis would know how to have just fun and maybe some illegal fun. I'd have to maybe watch myself on <laughs> Dennis. But bring, I'll bring Dennis. He'll get you in trouble, bro. Yeah, Dennis will get me in trouble. I'll bring, I'll bring the worm. I'll bring Dennis. I'll bring Isaiah. Because then I got that, you know, the the yeah. the you know uh, baby face, the, the innocence, yeah. you know, everyone's brother. I, that's why I bring Isaiah. He'll know how to f have fun. And then I need someone as a third. That's just man, Rasheed Wallace. Ah, Give me Rasheed mine. Wallace because I feel like Rasheed would just take it up a whole nother level, man. And and I, he'd bring me, man. That that whole trip would be a journey. So give yeah. me those three. Sheesh. look, bro, that's a party. Yeah. <laughs> that's a party, man. I got everyone talking junk. I got, that's yeah, a that. party. But you got to watch Seed and Dennis, bro, especially during the car game. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, you don't know what's going to happen you gotta there. Keep them down. You don't know what's going to happen there, man. Like, she will wake up, like, why is my hair dyed like this? And Dennis will be like, what, me? 
<laughs> but nah, and, and, and Zeke trying to keep the peace. Yeah, you need one guy in there that'd just smiling dope. away. That's that, that's Zeke for me. I'll give With that. the cerulean, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. But let me see here, man. Let me try and be creative here. I got to take Grant Hill. Yeah. Like, look, I know what people said about him on the court. And for me, he will play, you know, he's, his demeanor is cool. But we heard what Keith said. Yeah. Off the court, Grant Hill is wild. Not wild. Not crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. But he's 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 not as, you know, demeaned. We'll just yeah. say that. So look, I gotta have that. Man, that's my childhood. That was my Michael Jordan. Like straight up. That was that was my favorite. That was my best. I had the jerseys, I had the poster, I had the shoes, everything, man. Yeah, that's, that's so real. look, I gotta have Grant Hill there. Um I was gonna say Zeke, but we'll let Grant Hill take that spot since 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 you uh you know you showed him some love. But let me try and be interesting here. Who else would I take? I feel like I gotta take Kay Cunningham. Just because of how transform like transformative that pick was, and he's just a cool dude. I was man. about to say he he's just mellow. He's, like, just he's not mellow. gonna cause no issues. He's not gonna. He's just gonna chill. Yeah, and for me, it was when he came to Detroit. Him and Ashton. Yeah, uh, they were in the stadium at Comerica Park, and a crowd was just shouting, "We want K. We want K. We want K. We want K." Yeah. This was just before the draft, and Cade is absolutely loving it. Absolutely, he doesn't know if he's gonna be the pick. Yeah, but he's up there like, yo, let's go, let's go. And Ash and I hear him in the thing like, boy, you hear Detroit, that type of stuff, man. I was like, yo, they want to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you know, yeah, we can show him the best of Michigan. We can show him the best of Detroit with this cruise ship. Got to take Cade. Who else? Who's my yeah? Cade Grant Hill. I like that. Ooh, I like those two. Who is the third? You know what? You gotta have some muscle. You gotta have some body with you. Oh, who is this? You gotta have the fro. Oh, you that gotta have it. body, bro. You yep. gotta have Mr. Big Ben Wallace. You have to. If you smoke comes, to. he'll address it. He'll you have to. You have to. It. Grant Hill, Ben Wallace, K. Cunningham. I don't know how interesting the room would be, but I think my dream, my <laughs> yeah. night, I would be happy. <laughs> yeah, you'd be happy because those are the dudes you appreciate the most. But, but what's the most interesting room we could put together? Another three? Yeah, like, like it, what's it, so? Look, your room. My room, and then next to us is four Pistons, bro. <laughs> Who? What's the craziest room you could put together? On Man, this you could do former Pistons. You know what? Let's do sports then. We'll open it up now. Open it up. Yeah. What's 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 the people? What four Detroit sports athletes are next door? Mm. So you got Z, you got she, yep, and uh, the worm. I got, I got Grant it. Hill, K. I- I gotta throw D Mac in one of them. D Mac, because he'll know how to. Yeah, he'll know how to party. He'll know how to get lit. Are yeah. we bringing Calvin? Yeah, bring we'll Calvin. Calvin. I think Calvin deserves being there. And then the third one, we need like a just a character. Like oh. I, I'm trying to think of who we can have. Are we bringing Seda or Trick Trick? I, mm. I'm, oh, <laughs> you know that's tough. <laughs> Trick. I feel like Trick Trick and D Mac would be, and Calvin would be the funniest <laughs> damn thing. Because when Trick Trick was, when he came to Woodward Sports and they asked him that yeah. question, you see that yep. video? I yep. was, I, that's why I respect, I love Trick Trick. So, you know what? Give me Trick Trick. That's my Trick person. Trick, man. But look, I like Seda too. I yeah. don't know where to go because Trick it's Trick, tough. that's Unk, bro. Look, yep. I run into him around town. He always shows love. So, shout out Trick Trick. Um, since we're both picking and you got him covered, I'll say Seda, man. Yeah. Hey, and shout out to Seda, baby. Hey, he showed love to Woodward uh, Sports did. as well. Hey, so shout out to you. Hopefully, you and Killian can squash this beef. Hopefully, he plays good enough this year that you're like, you know what, good. But to be fair to that, he does say, hey, he wants him to do well. And he right. did see the improvement this year. He's just passionate. Like, you got to respect yeah. that. You got to respect that. Yep. Yep. But, all right. So, if we – who else, then? Who else are we putting? Detroit Sports? So, yeah. You know – Got to go Miggy. Miggy? Yeah, you gotta, Miggy would be interesting. You got you to gotta go Miggy, man. I, I feel like he has to be there. I think just to have these guys in a room having a conversation would be so sweet. Like yeah. you can have, you know, you bring your your even D Mac or Steve Eiserman, whoever you want. You have Miguel, you have Calvin, and then you have like Isaiah Thomas or whoever you want to put in that four. Just four different sports have just going out. That would be just what in the hell? No, it'd be legendary. Legendary. <laughs> I would like all it. the would legends like of it. Detroit. Hey, but look in the comments, I need you guys to tell us straight up. Tell us what three Pistons and then. What three Detroit sports figures yeah. are you taking with you on this cruise? We got to know. So uh, definitely, man, fill it out in the, in the comments section. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, and it's some local news here, man. 
this TikTok social media friendly mall at Oakland Mall. Did you see this? No, I didn't. Look, it got bought, and the owner is talking about turning it into some social media friendly thing, bro. So the you said the Oakland Mall? Yeah, Oakland Mall. Right, They're right. Turning it into a some type of like TikTok or social media. I'm I'm still trying to figure out yeah. it all. But he said that he wants this mall to cater to that demographic because that's where the future is. He's trying to wow. cater to the whole meta and all that type of stuff, the AR. If you had the opportunity to buy this mall, what would you turn it into? Mm. Oh, well, yeah. I'd have fun with it. It'd be like my own <laughs> fantasy factory. I wouldn't even be making a mall. They'd be like, what the hell is this dude doing? It's his personal damn like hangout. Yeah. But you know what? See, I'm just so different. Like, I turn it into just a bunch of courts. Like, I would just have yep. just a community <laughs> hoop center, have multiple courts. People come up all around. Pay your money. It's like a, a the biggest rec center in Michigan. I'll make it. Just humongous. Yeah, that's me, man. Extreme sports. Yes, I, I remember different sports. Like you can do it yeah, all. I went to a plex that had paintball inside of it as well. Oh my god! And that's what I'm saying, man. Look, look. If I could turn it into something like that, some type of like basketball, uh, rock climbing, paintball, some type of extreme sports. You just hang out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, indoor go karts, all that type of stuff. Definitely, man. But I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to bring it up just quickly. Uh, again, in the comments. Let us know what you would do. Why? Hey, because we can't. <laughs> say, like, I'm trying to think of like what that would look like. Yo, like, the dude is 31 years old too. Who oh, bought he's it? Young that too. 31. You got money. A money. <laughs> and he turned it into just a TikTok. I guess you come in there, you film TikToks. They still got stores and stuff. Like I don't. Yeah, they say it's gonna be stores, but it's gonna be some new interactive way. Oh, okay. So you're talking you're, about meta and stuff like that. Yeah, all future. this, all this new kind of AR I gotta check and, it out. and meta and stuff like. So I'm, I'm interested to see what it's gonna get into. I'm glad, you know, and the reason why I wanted to pair these two topics together is because of how progressive the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan is becoming. It right. seems like they're looking towards the future. And it's pretty cool to see, you know. Hey, look, we're Wilbur Pistons, but we are Detroit and Michigan as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to see where things are going. I'm hoping that people are getting out. It's going to be a, a nice time. We got, what, a nice little heat wave coming up here. Mm-hmm. Of 80-degree days. I know all people talk about this. It's so cold in the deep. <laughs> but not hey, right now not right now bro look 85 degrees are you getting into anything special honestly right now i'm trying to get outside more like even after we hooped friday and yep. i found myself back outside saturday and sunday like playing basketball just because that's just kind of like what i do like i like yeah. if i'm outside I'm, I'm playing ball or i'm because i'm not really a big like i'll go to the gym you go on the treadmill but how i get my cardio is is hooping, hooping. Like that, that's just how i find to, to exercise at all so now that it's getting nicer out man getting outside getting a sweat getting yep. in better shape because i realized friday 